Hi, I'm Lindsay and you're at Asale Eco Village um, in Morocco. I love this country. I've been coming to Morocco for 20 years and I always came back to this area. I really like Asila. I was a community development manager in this city area of Sheffield and my job was to initiate community development ideas so people were actually neighbourly and looked after each other. In Morocco, communities are still fairly intact. I learned to manage. I learned to manage people. I learned to manage budgets. I learned to project manage. I met a man in Asila who was a friend of a friend, and he said, you must come to see my land. I stood on the land, and I, I knew straight away this is where I want to live. A week later, I sent him the money. I didn't send the whole money, but I secured the land, not just with him, but also with me. I didn't want to go back, and those doubts coming. I just decided that I'd build a village and I'm not sure where it's going but I know I need an infrastructure where people can stay, where I can do group things but I'm not sure how that's going to go. I don't know how it's going to evolve. Welcome to Asala Eco Village. I'll give you a small tour of what we've done so far. This is what we call the English house or the boat house. It was actually built mainly by a volunteer, Jack who came to stay with me for 11 months. We finished it in the style, but it's like traditional English A-frame house. The roof is made with bulrush, a thatch with bulrush, which is harvested two kilometers just down the road and picked by local people and we pay to do it. It's adobe brick. Adobe is mud bricks, but we couldn't use it everywhere. Both ends are done with wattle and daub, with bamboo as the structure, and then infilled and plastered with the mud. So it's several styles. It's a really cozy house. I had this idea because I wanted to have, I've seen old films like medieval films when they batten down the gate. So because it's made mainly of two boats, we were gifted in a sealer. This is the oar of the boat. So welcome to the boathouse. It's really small. This is the um, keel of the boat, I think. See the shape here? That's the middle part of the boat. And then all the wood is the recycled boat wood. So everything's natural or recycled. I make all the cushions and all the seat coverings myself. I've got a background in textiles. The plaster's particularly fine and this is mud mixed with the fluff of the bulrush to make a really, really fine finish. And then it's painted with lime. The outside's also rendered with lime. Oh, the construction is A-frame. We've no nails or screws in this. It's just wood. Very, it's like medieval. So this is the outside bathroom with traditional Moroccan toilet. And we were growing vines up here, so we'll have grapes in the bathroom. Why not? Help yourself to a grate while you go into the loo. <laughs> this is my house, the main house, the first house I designed. And when I designed the house, I was sort of influenced by uh, Muslim and Christian cathedrals, but also Corbusier. It's also adobe bricks with a tile roof. All the wood is eucalyptus. These big trees in here, locally sourced eucalyptus trees, and the mud that we use is from beneath our feet. I wanted the idea of stained glass when the sun comes in, in the cathedral and how beautiful that is. And the back is sort of like next to something that looks like it could be an old mosque, uh, the shape of it with the dome. The electricity is uh, luckily municipal, along with the water. In time, we will think about being self-sufficient, but I really believe in supporting the local community. So I want to be part of the society. I don't want to be self-sufficient and apart from it. I want to contribute to it, and I want them to contribute to this. It's a really important principle of mine. So I'm not looking for self-sufficiency. So the bathroom, which is a bit like a hammam, the idea is to uh, sit on the edge and bathe and not just plunge into a deep bath. I rarely use it like that. I go to the local hammam. Um, this is a cold shower. Our water's heated by a solar spiral water heater, uh, which means you can only get a hot shower when it's sunny. But that's a lot of the time in Morocco. I had volunteers help me all the way, and also Bashir, who's my ex, who is a master builder. And so 
He didn't work on this house, but he's been working with me for the last 18 months. This is the cob oven. Built this like three years ago and it's, we're still using it almost every day. The base is made up of two tractor tires, which I got for free. And then it's filled with six months worth of plastic garbage. A layer of um, beer bottles and that insulates the heat from going down. Just made with mud. This year we've built this new house. This is the volunteer accommodation with a zinc roof and this sleeps uh, for volunteers. Again it's made with adobe but the bottom of the front we ran out of adobe brick so this is rammed dirt at the front and wattle and daub at the top. Sometimes you have to use everything. Guys I'm coming in. Hey, welcome to the volunteer house. <laughs> but this house only took me 13 weeks to build. This is a bit of fun. I just built this because I had an idea one morning. I kept seeing these cable reels and I thought maybe you can make a house out of these. The moment it's not being used, it leaks a little. We need to improve it. This again is made from everything recycled. This is the new exciting build. This whole area is going to be the new community hub. But at the centre of the hub, there's going to be a hammam. A hammam is a Moroccan bathhouse. This is going to be a four metre tower with a glass dome on the top. The bottom two metres is going to be a small room. The entrance is going to be here and a changing room here. Over here there's going to be the faram, the fire. This is going to be a cob oven. It's going to heat the water for the um, hammam but it's also going to put in hot air so there's going to be, this is seating. On the outside there's going to be a communal kitchen and then it's going to be 10 metres across. These are the adobe bricks that we made in the summer. You can't make adobe bricks in November. This particular brick mould has made every brick for every house that I've built. 10,000 mud bricks have made, been made two by two with that. This is my favourite house. It's taken two years to build but the idea of the house is that it's based on yin yang and you move through the house from the light to the dark. And the view here is particularly amazing at sunset. So we're going to have a look at the interior. And this is the grand entrance. Right, welcome to the Yin Yang Hobbit House. The design, circular, built into the hillside. It feels to me like a very feminine space. There's no right angles. It's all in the round. really happy with it. I, I sort of designed this as a female space but also with the idea that it'd be perfect for honeymoon. This is the perfect place for your honeymoon. It's all organic, it's locally sourced and a perfect retreat. Here's the bathroom. And here is the book nook. I designed this not only for guests, but also for my family to visit. And I have one grandchildren, I'm sure I'm going to have more. The romantic dream is to sit here with my grandchildren and read them stories in the sunset. It's got a very special light that a volunteer designed for me. Not only is it magical in that way, it is also music. So this is just a little sweet corner. Uh, in the evening, this is the space to sit, the salon. Sort of designed for families and also for honeymooners, hopefully. I just think it's a really great party space. And my granddaughter really loved it because it's also a play space. This bed is designed for a three to six year old. And under here, just for three year olds, is a hiding space. And then the end of the day, you retreat to the bed cave. And I just wanted to build a really romantic space. And I painted it red just to increase that romantic vibe. I had this crazy idea that from the outside it would look like a spaceship. It doesn't really look like a spaceship, but it just gives it a little bit of an ethereal look on the outside. 
Next year we're planning on running a programme of holidays and courses on natural building. But in the meantime, we're um, renting out both the Boat House and the Yin Yang House through my Facebook page, Asala Eco Village. And like if a 61-year-old English woman in a fairly regular job can come to Morocco and do it, you know, you've got nothing to lose, really. You can revert to mainstream life. You can go back to that. Just give it a go, you know, and trust yourself, trust your instincts, trust your instincts to build. We've all got it in us, we can just do it. You can actually do whatever you like. You create your own barriers, but you can do what you want. Okay, this is the important message, really. Don't let bastards get you down. Is that right? <laughs> can I say that? Can I say whatever you like. <laughs>